Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Hope, uh, you guys were able to practice uh, something yesterday. And if you have any doubts or anything like that, we can even address them. And uh, we need a topic for today. Is there a topic that uh, you want to cover for today? No, we discussed for statistics today. Uh, say that again, uh, Nareen. I didn't pick that, that up. Is it. Yes, I can't hear you too clearly. Say that out slowly. The statistics. Statistics, of course. Statistics. statistics. Yeah, we can do statistics. Okay. I think a couple more people have to join, but I, yeah, but we can start now. So the first part of statistics uh, deals with drawing graphs, right? It's a uh, histogram and uh, ogives. Yeah. I think that is okay, right? It's the central tendency that uh, we can work on. Just give me a few seconds. 
So there are three kinds of data. There are three types of data. The first is raw data. I'll just use a different color. The first is raw data. Raw data is just numbers. Let's say the marks of four or five students in a class, three out of uh, 10 and two, something like that. So that's raw data, right? That's, that's just marks, that's just one thing. The second type of data is tabulated. Tabulated data is in the form of, a, of two columns, usually. And uh, it could be, uh, let's say you walk into a shop, a shoe shop, and you see shoe, and the shopkeeper has, you know, shoes of different sizes. So let's say shoe size and uh, and maybe how many shoes of a particular size that that shopkeeper sold so we'll call that a sale okay so shoe sizes could be 8 9 10 and 11 and of that of size 8 it could be you know 50 uh, 39, 47, and uh, maybe about 18 or something like that, okay? So that's tabulated. You have two things to play around, okay? So the way to calculate mean depends on the type of data, at least between raw and tabulated. It's more or less the same for tabulated and the next one that we're gonna look at, which is anybody know the last type of data? So you have raw, tabulated and Perfect silence, everybody, everything okay? The last is called grouped data, right? Haven't heard of this word? Group data contains, contains intervals. So that's how it's different. It's similar to tabulated data. The only difference being it's got groups. Right? So if I were to arrange this vertically, horizontally rather, it would be, um, <clears throat> let's again go back to marks and number of students, that's frequency is what I'll call it. So in a test that uh, you know, where the marks were out of 30, so zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Let's say the frequency would be uh, 7, uh, 12, and 14. Okay. So these are the three types of data. And uh, this is especially useful when we look at finding mean. Okay, so the mean for the first type of data is just pure average. So you add up all these numbers, sum, and by the number of numbers, we can call that as frequency. So mean is equal to, mean is equal to sum divided by frequency. So clear so far, everything okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, just to take an example of this, it's just three plus seven plus eight plus two divided by nine plus two. 
divided by five numbers. Uh, for the second type of data, tabulated data, it's not just average, but it's weighted average, okay? Which means it's the, first you've got to multiply all of these, okay, what I'm circling in blue, the, find the product of those. So mean is equal to eight times 50. So this is also what you guys have called shortcut method. I think you guys put it in a table, right? I'll show you that as well. But it's just, it's pretty much this, eight into 50 plus nine into 39. You've got to find the sum of those, okay? Eight into 50, nine into 39, plus 10 into 47, plus 11 into 18. All of that divided by how many of there are. So that divided by this number at the bottom. It's 50 plus 39 plus 47 plus 18. Okay. Sir, so this is direct method, no sir. Shortcut method is with a deviation. Oh, this is direct method, my bad. Yeah, this is direct method. You're right, my bad. Yeah. This is direct method. The first method, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Plus 18. And lastly, you have grouped data. And for group data, the method is, the methods are similar to the ones that you use for tabulated data. It's exactly the same, all right? Just that one column is extra because you have, in tabulated data, you have numbers over here, right? Not groups. So instead, in, in this, you have groups and you've got to turn that into a number. The best number to find is the number in between. So you've got to find the mid number or the mid value. Okay. You get the mid value by zero plus 10 divided by two. Just adding up the lower bound and the upper bound, dividing it by two. Okay. So this would be five. This would be 15. This would be 25. So that, that's what we call the mid value. Okay. The mid value takes the place of this over here. That's that. just that one extra column. Yeah, moving on to the next screen. And ways to find mean. Raw data, I don't think we need to go over, right? Look at tabulated data. Um, three methods. First is direct method. Uh, second, so for direct method, you have you know, a set of columns that you need. For all of these, I think uh, there's a set of columns. For direct method, I think there are three. Then for uh, shortcut, there are four. Shortcut is the also called the uh, assumed mean method. That's got four four columns, so three columns, four columns. And the last one is the uh, step deviation. And that's got uh, five columns. Okay? Just remember that bit of data. Here also you use assumed mean, okay, in step deviation. A reason it's called step deviation is we kind of see how far away this is deviated. It's a, deviation is the distance away from the mean or average. So we use that, the variation from the average. You may not fully understand that as of now, or teachers may not explain that, uh, but that's that may be needed if someone's taking statistics or uh, uh, choosing the... Uh, um, in 11th class, you have a choice, I think, between vectors and um, statistics. And one part of math, you can choose that. So the ones who are choosing statistics will have this. 
But anyway, back to where we were. Looking at direct method, let's take an example. Um, I think there's one in your textbook that's there. And uh, we'll try and use the same example for all three methods, just to check and see, or to know that all three methods give you the same result. Okay, okay just give me a few seconds, let me... Okay, so let's just say and we'll use this for tabulated data, right? Not the grouped data, but the tabulated data start with. The group data is almost the same. So I'm gonna to move to the next page. Can I do that? So this is direct method. And we'll do this for tabulated data and we'll do this for group data. Okay, the example that I'm gonna take for tabulated data could be uh, just this table here. Are you guys following this so far? Any questions? So we are looking to find mean here, okay? We are looking to find mean by direct method. and mean, okay. So this is average using direct method, the simplest of all the three methods. Let's say I'm given some data, X and F. Okay, this is from your textbook, okay? Five, four, six, five, seven, three, eight, six, and lastly, nine, two. So the, this is the data that I've, that I've been given. And I want to find the mean of this data. So what I'm looking to find is the average of this bit here, this data here. Okay? I'm looking to find the average of that. This whole method is for. Okay, let's see how we can achieve that. Okay, so my first column is, uh, my first column is X. So this horizontal data, I'm gonna write it vertically. So first column X, second column F, third column is the product of those two. So we'll call it F into X. So five, four, six, five, seven, three, eight, six, nine, two. So here I can add up this to give me sigma f. And uh, sigma f for this is 20. Next, I'm just gonna find the product. And that is, uh, 20, 30, 21, 48, 18. And I'll find the product of, I'll find the sum of this as well. We'll call it sigma fx because the column is fx. Sigma stands for summation or sum, okay? And that gives me about 137. So very simple, the mean is just sigma fx divided by sigma f. I'm gonna write it on top here. Mean is equal to sigma fx divided by sigma f. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Let me know if you haven't understood. Just any student can just stop me and ask me, all right? I'm very particular that everybody understands this. Mean is sigma fx by sigma f. 
So that's 137 divided by 20. That will give you 6.85. So what this means is that in the X's that I've circled with green over here, in these X's, the average value is 6.85. This could have been shoe sizes and sales. Let's say X was shoe sizes, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And F was the amount of sales for each of those shoe sizes, four, five, three, six, two. Um, so the average shoe size that was sold would be 6.85, okay? Closer to seven, that's the most, that's the fastest selling shoe, shoe size rather. Okay, is that fine? So very similar, we'll use, uh, we'll do this for group data, okay? Obviously I can't use the same data because the data is gonna be a little different, but we'll continue and use the same data for different methods, okay? So for shortcut, we'll use same data as we use for direct. But continuing with direct method for grouped data this time. Okay? Anybody? So everybody knows what kinds of data there are, right? What's the difference between tabulated and group? No problems there. Anybody want yes, any sir. clarity on that? Let me know if there is anything. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try something out with grouped. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take a simple example. Um, so I'm just going to take class interval and frequency. Class interval and frequency. So it's zero to 10. That's 10 people, 10 to 20. Make sure that these intervals are continuous, okay? So these two numbers have to be the same. The uh, upper bound of one uh, interval and the lower bound of the succeeding interval. 10, 6. Okay, this has come in a paper as well, one of the years. Okay, so it's an ICSC level problem. Level of difficulty would be an ICSC level problem. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a table and uh, very similar to the one I've drawn on the previous page. There'll be one column that's extra. Like we talked about earlier, the mid value. One, two, three, four. Okay. Pretend that the lines are straight, okay? They're not. Okay, so filling in the data. So what I, what I have here horizontally, I'm just going to arrange here vertically. So class interval, frequency. Now, this is an important one. This is mean value or mid value, whatever you guys call it, it's absolutely fine. But that's gonna play the part of your X in this table, okay? So mid value, I call it mid value because it's easier for me to remember it. It's the middle of the class interval. Okay? Some teachers call it mean value also, it's absolutely fine. And frequency is F, okay? And lastly, it's the same as the previous uh, exam previous method that we did. Uh, we use for tabulated data, the same thing from here on, okay? So it's just this 
we are using only the second, third, and fourth column here. Okay. Zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. So first I'm just gonna write down as is, 10, 6, 8. So I'm just writing down all what's in the table. Okay, first I wrote down this, now I'm writing down this, 8, 12, and 5. Okay. So just to give you an idea, the comparison between the previous one and this, so the direct method, we use these, okay? Now we're gonna use these three. It's exactly the same. So we're replacing class interval by mid value. All right? That's all we're doing. Okay, so mid value is the middle value of this. Okay. So how do you find the middle value? Just add up the numbers and divide by two, add up the bounds and divide by two. So zero plus 10 divided by two, which will give you 10 by two, which is five. Okay. Same with the others and you will get 15, 25, 35, 45. Okay. Don't forget to summate your frequency. So sigma f is going to be 41. Okay. Yeah, and then f into x, just multiply all those numbers. So five into 10, these two numbers, these two numbers, 10 into five is 50. Same thing in the next line as well, six into 15, 90. So I know my 15 times tables. Um, 25 into eight, the same as 100 into four. That's, I'm sorry, 100 into two, that's 200, okay. Uh, 12 into 35 is like 70 into six, right? You double this, make it 70 and six is 420. And 45 into five, that's 225. So sigma fx, you just add up these numbers, five, eight, nine. So the mean is very similar to the one you did earlier. Just gonna write it on top. Mean is equal to sigma fx divided by sigma f. And that's this number, the last column divided by the second column. It's always that, it's the last column divided by the second column. So 985 divided by 41 and that would give you 24 point something. 24, one over 41. So that's your mean, that's the, let's say these were, you know, marks, let's say class interval was marks in a particular exam and frequency is the number of students who got those marks. So in a test in, let's say history out of 50 marks, so between zero and 10 marks, 10 students. Between 10 and 20 marks, six students. Between 20 and 30 marks, eight students. Between 30 and 40, 12. And the ones who got between 40 and 50 marks, the bright students in the class, or the high scoring students in the class, five students were there. So what we are, we've been given this data and we've been asked to find what's the average mark of the class, all right? So this is what the teacher has, made a note of this table and the principal has asked the teacher, can you tell me what the average in the class, is that fine?
can i move forward anybody writing down so you can move forward okay if there's anything let me know these pages are still existing so we can always go back okay i'm continuing so these pages are still there okay, the ones that we and i think there's a save option in your uh, on your screen okay if you if you click on uh, if you click on annotate i don't know if you on top of your screen there's a pop up which says view options if you just drag your mouse to the top of the screen you have a drop down called view options with an arrow next to that click on the arrow uh one of the options should be annotate and if you click on annotate you'll get a long horizontal menu bar the rightmost option would be save and when you get save you get png and pdf pdf is better png sometimes causes problems with many students i've seen okay so if you want to you can it'll save the whole sheet uh, as one so all the pages will be saved at one shot okay so the next method that we're going to employ like i said i'll use the same data and the next method that i'm going to employ would be the shortcut method okay second is shortcut method Okay, again, we're going to do the same for tabulated data and for grouped data. Okay. Just give me a few seconds. I'll just get that. So I don't know if you remember we used a particular uh, piece of data. I'm going to use the same data, all right? bear with me as i draw this it's easier to write on a write in on a regular board than on a white board okay so the two variables that we had were x and f filling in this was 5 4 6 5 7 8 eight six and nine two so this was the data that we were working with for the previous sum okay and again the same thing just make sure you draw the column here you're going to have one extra So you have four columns here: one, two, three, and four. Okay. X F, then. Um, you have a column called d okay d is equal to x take away a we we'll come to what a is in a bit and the last column is f into d so this into this so we'll write the data down as is so 5 6 7 8 6 5 7 8 6 Nine as well. Four, five, three, six, and two. 
Okay. So we've got to pick a number. So like I said earlier, right? We're trying to find the mean of this. So let's assume that one of them is the mean. Okay, let's start with a let's start with a random number in this that we think is the mean. Pick a number from the middle, usually that's what your school advises you to take. So the number in the middle here looks like it's seven, right? The number in the middle looks like it's seven. So we'll pretend that that's the mean. Okay. We'll work with that as a mean. So this is the assumed mean. So just mark in your uh, table, when you draw the table, in the same way that I'm marking, A is equal to this, all right? So assume mean is this. Okay. So the letter D is actually for deviation. We don't use step deviation here, but it's called deviation, okay? And deviation is how far each of these fellows is from the mean. How far five is from the mean, how far six is from the mean, how far eight is from this mean, how far nine is from the mean, okay? So how far each of these X's is from the mean. That's why it says X minus A, okay? And for each of the X's, let's calculate. So for the first one, D is equal to X minus A, which is X is five here and assumed mean is seven. So five minus seven is negative two, okay? So that's your D for the first one. And the second one it is six minus seven. So how far away six is from seven, it's minus one. And the next one is seven minus seven. Okay, so how far, how much is the deviation from the mean? Zero, it's, it, there's no deviation from the mean, right? Seven is the mean itself. Next eight, uh, number eight is one further than the mean. So eight minus seven is one, it's, it's one after the mean and uh, rather assumed mean. And nine minus seven is two after the assumed mean. So that's your column of Ds. Okay. All right. Now, lastly, you've just got to find F into D. Uh, make sure you have your Sigma F going. It's 20, I think. Sigma F is 20. Okay. Yeah, so always, so this F into this column D. Okay, so you'll be multiplying all of these by all of these. Okay, makes it easier now. Um, again, just to reiterate, hope you guys are following. And if there's any doubt at all, just don't stop. And uh, just don't stop to ask me already. Even if I'm in full flow explaining something, just don't hesitate to stop me right there and ask. Because if you don't, then you know you wouldn't follow what's happening subsequently. I trust that all of you are following. We're doing this as a crash course, a little quick. That's why I specifically asked if you're not following, let me know. Okay, so four into minus two is minus eight. Five into minus one is minus five. Three into zero is zero. Six into one is six. Two into two is four. Okay. So adding up these numbers, the negative numbers give you minus 13. The positive numbers give you 10. So minus 13 and 10 gives you minus 3. So that's sigma FD. Okay, the summation of this FD column. Okay, so the formula for this is uh, mean. Just write it down somewhere. No place. Mean is equal to assumed mean plus sigma FD by sigma F. As you know, it's pretty much like the last time, the last column divided by this. Only thing here is we are adding the assumed mean to that. Okay, It's just sigma FD by sigma F, the ratio of those two columns. 
but you're adding assume mean to that. So assume mean is seven and plus negative three by 20. Okay, and um, yeah, let's see what we get when we add that. So negative three by 20 would give me Z, negative 0 0.15 and uh, 6.85 would be my result. Okay. Is that okay? And let's check and see if the second method has given us the same answer as the first method should be the case. But just going back quickly, taking a peek. And there you go. Uh, we've got 6.85 by this method as well. So your answer will be the same no matter what method you use is the uh, takeaway from this. Okay with that, so we'll quickly look at group data. I know this is going to be a bit of a longish session, but I think it's better to do it properly rather than uh, do it hurriedly and not understand it. Okay, so we look at group data. I'm just gonna erase this and write it on top. grouped data. Group data, okay. And uh, we'll work with the same numbers as we did in a previous sum. I'm slowly going to get some student participation in this. This is no fun, you guys being absolutely quiet. Okay. So I'm going to call out one by one and ask you. Okay. If you're embarrassed, let me know. Just say I'm, I don't want to answer these questions. Okay. I'm fine with that. So class interval that we had previously and frequency. Um, what we used last time here. Yeah. Zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. I think we have lots of space. Why am I struggling with this? Zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and lastly, 40 to 50. And the numbers were 10, 6, 8, 12, 5. Okay, let's draw a table for this. Very similar, but again, that one column will be extra, just the way we did for the previous one, that mid-value column, right? That's the one that's extra, this column here. And that mid value, as you know, replaces this. Okay. So we're gonna try and convert that. We're gonna replace that class interval with mid value. That's all our objective is. When we are making the table. Okay, this is going to be a bit of a squeeze because we have to draw five columns here. But we'll try our best. So one. Dang. Two. 
to this is mid value right this can be smaller three four and five okay these can be bigger okay so let's name the so first is class interval okay i'm going to pick one of you guys all right not with the intention of embarrassing you but i'm going to ask you to because i want some participation i want you guys to say something if you guys are quiet you will fi fall asleep okay so we're going to go in some order no particular order just some random order so i'm going to ask someone out of this group and just randomly i'm going to pick up uh, nena and namita okay can you hear me hello yes sir okay so just tell me what i need to write in the class intervals so what? 0 to 10 0 to 10 then 10 to 20 yeah followed by 20 to 30 yeah 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 thank you okay next is frequency okay so i'm going to ask uh, debangi can you hear me yes sir okay go ahead and tell me what i need to write for frequency 10 10 then 6 6 then 8 8 then 12 12 and 5 very good fantastic okay all right um So my next column is going to be that mid value, all right? So this is F, the mid value is always X, okay? So the mid value is the middle of this group of data that I have. And uh, okay. and it's easy to fill in because it's just the middle of those numbers, all right? And uh, I think, uh, Kushali, if you can hear me, can you help me with that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, so the first one is five. Correct. Fifteen. Fifteen. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. And forty-five. So the next column is, uh, okay, the next task is assume mean. Okay, I'll just pick up a random assumed mean over here. And that assumed mean, I have to pick from which column, okay. Nareen, hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, Nareen. Which assume mean do you think we should pick? Um, the middle one. Okay, which one is that? 20 to 30, 25. 25, brilliant. Well done. Okay. All right. And uh, So the next column is going to be uh, deviation, that's D. So it's now it's going to be the same as the left-hand side, all right? The deviation away from the mean. So D is equal to X minus A. Okay. All right, uh, Anaria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want you to pick up... Uh, I want you to tell me what the D for each of these is. Okay, sir. So the first one is 5 minus 25. Yeah, and what would that be? I'll write that down. 5 minus okay, 25. Sir. It's 
you don't have to write this in the exam, the five minus 25, you can straight away write the answer. Okay. That's uh, negative 20. Then it's 15 minus 25. Yeah, what's that? So minus five. Minus 10. The minus next 10, one. sorry, sorry. Okay. Next one. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. I can hear you, Anaria. I don't think you can hear me. Can anyone, Hello? everyone Hello? else hear me? Nare. Yes, yeah, sir, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, and it looks like uh, can't, but I'll enter these. I, I think you've got the idea which I was which I was looking for. So this is twenty five minus twenty five, and thirty five minus. Can you hear me? I no. can hear you. Okay, sir. And I sorry, can hear you. Okay. Sorry, sir. I think there was some problem. Forty five minus twenty five is twenty. Okay, so these are the values of. All right. Okay. Uh, last column is uh, going to be F into D. Okay. Remember, it's the it's these two numbers that I'm highlighting now. F into D, frequency into <clears throat> the la the previous column that we enter. F into D. Okay. And again, just make sure that we know the values of sigma F is 41. Okay, strange number there. Okay. Um, Yash Agarwal, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Please tell me what the what the column what the value yes, for sir. f into d will be. Uh, sir, first one is minus two hundred. Then minus thirty. Then then thirty. No sixty. Sorry, for sixty. 60 then zero. Then uh one twenty plus one twenty. Then plus uh hundred. Twenty five into twenty is. Plus 100. 100. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I've got an important message from um, Anaria, and she has a suggestion. I, and I think it's a fair suggestion. Uh, she said that uh, if you want to, you can use the you can use the method of your choice all right in school so if you feel that direct method is the one that you remember you can use it for everything you don't need to know the other two methods as such okay but in my personal experience sometimes the other methods make the calculations easier you won't have such big numbers to deal with but if you choose to use the direct method please go ahead and use it. So that's that's the message that she's, that's what her teacher in school said. That if yes, you want to, uh, that's specific only to this year because um, this year they said they won't give you like a particular method to use. You can use any method this year. Yes, okay. so they said that. Because most of the time it won't be mentioned. They wouldn't ask you which method to apply. So you could just directly use that's direct correct. method. I think previous years they did ask you sometimes, but uh, okay, yes, this sir, year but the, the, council, council, the council clarified for this year. Enough. Okay, since we are almost at the end of this, we might as well just finish this off. But two uh, twenty, right? So that's negative forty. Just to give you uh, the same calculations, all right? So mean is assumed plus sigma f d by sigma f, and that is. Uh, Twenty five minus forty by forty one. 
and that of course would give you 24 1 by 41 which is the same as we got in our previous method uh, so you see that the numbers here are easier to deal with right you have 260 and thing it's it's for the sake of the last column that we use the different methods sometimes it's difficult but uh, like uh, your teachers have told you you can you can just stick with the direct method and uh, I, yeah you can make do with that okay all right so there's one more method called step deviation we probably won't uh, do that we may not have the time but is there a and is there a sum that you guys want to do the most popular one that usually would come is the one where the uh, where you get tabulated data and one of the uh, one of the frequencies will not be given it will be x or something like that okay so that's generally a popular sum that you get um, all right um, yeah. okay one of the frequencies will be unknown do you want to work on any sum, anything at all? Does anyone has any doubts? Uh, more importantly, has everybody understood this? Any yes, doubts? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't hear a universal yes. There are some splattering yes, of yes. everyone, right? Okay. Um, shall we try one out? Do you guys have time? Because these sums take time. It may take 10 minutes. So we might have to exceed the class by five minutes or so. Also, just remember if the intervals are not continuous, you'll have to make them continuous. Okay. I don't think this year they're going to, they're going to give you discontinuous intervals as such, but if your intervals are like, you know, uh, one to five and then six to 10, 11 to 15. So you see that the intervals here are discontinuous. Okay, five and six and 10 and 11. Uh, we need to make them continuous. Why do we need to make them continuous? Because we don't know where 5.5 .5 will fit in. We don't, okay. So what, what you've got to do if you want to make these continuous is just look at these two numbers, okay? the upper bound of one and the lower bound of the succeeding one, add them uh, or subtract them and divide by two. Subtract them at six minus five divided by two. That's one by two, which is 0 0.5. So add 0 0.5 to this and subtract 0 0.5 from this. Right? So your new intervals will be 0 0.5 to 5.5 .5, and the same for the others as well 5.5 to 10.5 10.5 .5 to 15.5 and so on okay. so now you see that the intervals are continuous so these two these two are continuous Yeah, is that okay? But generally they don't, if they do, then you know what to do. Shall we do a sum? Um, yes. Anybody has any doubt? If not, I'll pick a sum at random and I'll do it. So could we do the nine sum in 24B? Nine sum in 20? 4B. 24B, 9 sum, okay. You'll just have to tell me what that sum is. Uh, is it a class interval or I'll write the data down. Just... Yes, sir. It has two missing frequencies. Okay, we can, we'll try that out. Okay, so what are the classes? 0 to 20. Is it lots of them or few of them? Five classes, six classes? There are six. six. So I have to budget the space accordingly. 
Okay, what are the titles of the class? What's the title of the class interval? Class. Oh, it's just class. Okay, and the other one? Frequency. Frequency, okay. And the first class interval is? Zero to 20. Okay, next. 20 to 40. 40 to 60. 60 to 80, 80 to 100, and 100 to 120. Uh, yeah, tell me the frequencies as well. 5, F1, okay. 10, F2, Seven yeah. and eight. And eight, okay. So the mean of the following distribution is 62.8. 62.8. Sixty and the sum of all the frequencies is 50. F is 55, zero, okay. All right, so we've got to find F1 and F2, right? Okay, yeah, this is a popular sum where you have missing frequencies. I was talking about one, but I think this example has two missing frequencies. Okay. So I think direct method is the way to go. So we make four columns. Two, three, four. Okay. Okay. Some more. Uh, someone else to speak up. Um, just going in some sort of order. Mariam Shweb, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead and tell me the class uh, intervals, please. Yes, sir. 0 to 20. 0 to 20. 20 to 40. 20 to 40. 40 to 60. 40 to 60. 60 to 80. 60 to 80. 80 to 100. 80 to 100. 100 to 120 to 120 thank you okay frequency somebody else someone who I haven't I have asked everyone right is there anyone who I haven't asked for any assistance so far Everyone's been asked, right? Okay. So I want to make sure that all of you participate, all right? Is that's the whole idea of this and making sure that you can speak up and making sure that you've understood, just getting the conversation in so that if you want to ask me a question, you're on talking terms with me. Okay. Okay. So frequency, somebody else, maybe uh, Naren. Yes, sir. Uh, you, it's five, F1, 10, F2, seven, eight. Yeah, uh, next column is the mid value, right? Mid value or X. Nena, Namita, go ahead, help me out with the mid value. So 10. Uh, 10, good. 30. 30. 50. 50. 70. Yep, yeah, very good. 90. 
and one ten. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. The final one is f into x. So here the sigma f. Okay. Um, yeah, Debangi, tell me the uh, tell me the value for sigma f, please. Just add up these numbers the numerical numbers and then you know f1 and f2 can be just written down separately so what are the what are the what is the sum of these numerical values 5 10 7 and 6 just those four 28. numbers so it's actually 8 and not 6 it's 8 dang okay there you go i would have lost all my marks for that one thank you yeah, what's the sum of these four now, Debangi? 30. 15 and 15 make 30. And then you've got to say plus F1 plus F2, right? So that's your sigma F, okay? So just put those two variables as well. So 30 plus F1 plus F2. Okay, so someone tell me uh, F, F times X, uh, Anaria. So first one's 50. Then it's 30 F1. Yeah. Then it's 500. Yeah. Then it's 70 F2. Yeah. Then it's 630. Yeah. And then finally 880. Sigma FX. Okay. So that's a lot of numbers. Just quickly... Uh, Calculate that. So 550 and 630 and 880 gives me 2060 plus 30 F1 okay, plus 70 F2. These two we write them down separately because they're unlike terms, F1 and F2 terms, okay? Just check and see if someone can just do the calculation somewhere and point out to me if I'm incorrect. Okay. So it's 2060. Okay. So according to the formula, according to the formula, the mean is, uh, this is direct method, okay? We're going to use direct method. We have used direct method, of course. So, Kushali, can you tell me the formula? Uh, sigma fx by sigma f. Thank you. Okay. And the substitution for that, it will be... Uh, sigma f x uh, mean of course we have the mean already given to us and that's 62.8 okay. sigma f is given to us as 50 so we'll write that down at the side somewhere that's 30 f 30 plus f1 plus f2 is given to us as 50 okay so this data i'm just going to highlight that sigma f and this is equal okay so that will form one equation of us 30 plus f1 plus f2 will be equal to 50 okay, okay. and then the second one will be using the formula to get there okay so sigma fx is sigma fx is 2060 plus 30 F1 plus 70 F2 okay. divided by Sigma F. We can take Sigma F as the given value, which is 50 for the time being. Okay, So we multiply this by the 62.8 into 50, which is 3140 is equal to 2060 plus 30 F1 plus 70 F2 
um, just subtracting these two, you get, so moving this term over to the left, you get 1080 is equal to 30 F1 plus 70 F2. So you can just universally divide this by 10 and just all of these zeros will cut out. Okay. So 3 F1 plus 7 F2 is equal to 108. So that's one equation from your simultaneous equation. The other simultaneous equation will come from this, which is F1 plus F2 is equal to 20, right? Moving the 30 over to this side. So it's F1 plus F2 is equal to 50. So let's not solve the simultaneous equations now because that's something that you've learned in an earlier class. But if you solve those, you'll get your answer. You're okay with that, right? Solving simultaneous equations. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah, we are meeting next week. Next Saturday, the class will be there, 8.30 and uh, Sunday, 8.30 as well. So I'm happy that all of you guys could join me. But uh, I hope that all of you guys could follow. If there are any doubts, uh, you have my phone number and my email. Just uh, don't hesitate to drop me a, a picture or a, a doubt. Okay, make sure that you study and prepare during the week. Um, if you guys are doing, you know, uh, an hour of math every day, uh, it's brilliant. Okay, and make sure that you do at least 10 to 12 sums in that hour. Uh, don't do less than that. Um, it should be timed practice from now on. Okay, make sure you time your practice so that you don't dawdle uh, while doing the sum and you know that you're um, you know, following the time as well. At least you'll struggle in the paper. Always target to finish your paper 10 minutes before, 10 or 15 minutes before SCED. You have 24 questions. You have about 150 minutes. That's roughly about six minutes per sum average. Um, make sure that you uh, try to do the sums in five, five and a half minutes. Okay, less than six minutes if you can. Uh, so in case there's any doubts, any problems like that, you will. Thing. And don't hesitate to do the same sum twice, not in the exam, while studying. So you get more familiar with the sum itself. Okay. So I'll leave you with that. And I'll see you guys next week. Uh, please practice every day and bring me the doubts. Okay. Have a great week ahead. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day, sir. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.